What's going on guys, welcome back to another video. You already know what time it is, let's make some more progress on my Mark II Escort. You would have just seen me bring this into the garage. Now this is the sump to suit my Pinto as I'm putting my two litre Pinto in an Escort. The sump needs to be slightly modified or you need to pick up a Mark II RS2000 sump. Went down to Burton Power and I've purchased their reproduction one. It's really well designed. You got this baffle in there as well to stop the oil from escaping the pickup when you're sort of harsh cornering and whatnot. It comes with all the hardware as well and a sump bung, so that's always helpful. Whilst down at Burnt Power, I also picked up a dipstick tube and dipstick to suit the sump. And I also picked up the pickup pipe, which is a RS2000 pickup pipe. And last but not least, I also picked up a new thermostat gasket. So I think the plan of action is going to be get the Pinto back on the engine stand so I can work on it nice and freely. I strip off all the old bits and I'll fit the parts, including the sump, and we'll go from there. There we go, after a little bit of effort, the Pinto is now back on the engine stand and I'm just about to remove the old sump from it. Here is the old sump, I've now got it off. I only had it held in with two bolts. It's worth noting that I'm not quite sure what sump this is, whether it is the original sump for the Pinto, but it's been modified to miss the cross member um, and fit into a Mark II Escort. So yeah, it's actually all right. It's just leaking slightly from one of the welds down the bottom, but I'll be keeping this as a backup because yeah, I can always weld it back up. It's not the prettiest, but I can always paint it black. Um, I've just obviously gone for the new shiny option, um, but yeah, there's still not a great deal wrong with this sump. Next up, I'm just gonna remove this old pickup pipe. Looks like a 13 mil there and two 10 mils holding it on there. So let's get that removed. There's one. Labash. <laughs> That's a little thing. Uh, I've, re I've never seen it on a pickup pipe before, but the tabs were bent over to stop the bolts from coming loose. Not sure why they would, compared to any others. And there you go, that is the old pickup pipe off. There's only a few noticeable differences, and that is the fact that the new one has got a wider pickup. This one's sort of quite small. This one has also been modified. As you can see, there's some welds there, but it's been nicely done to fit the modified sump. But now I'm running a new Burton Power sump. I'm gonna be using the Burton Power pickup pipe as well. So I'm just about to go and fit that. I've got a gasket kit here and I've got the oil pickup pipe gasket here as well. I've cleaned off any excess that was left over. It's just gonna slot on there like that. New pickup pipe is all installed now. Really happy with that. How fresh does that look? I also kept that tab thing only because I wasn't sure if I really needed it and if people would be screaming at me if I left it off. So I thought, you know what, it's doing no harm. I might as well just whack it back on and I've tapped over the tabs again. Next up on a list of things to do is to remove all of this old cork gasket. So for this new sump to seal properly, every single last bit of that needs to be removed.
Now that the surface for the new sumps and mount to is nice and clean, I've just whacked out the gaskets. I've got a cork one for the new sump, and there's also two ends rubbers that I need to slot in. One goes here, one goes here, either end of the crank. Even though I've got the cork gasket, I'm just gonna put a tiny little smidge of some gasket sealant around here, just so they're not flapping about and I can actually get the sump up nice and easily. Well, I forgot to press time lapse on the camera, but it didn't take too long at all. That's the cork gaskets now stuck down, just ever so slightly. New sump is all in now and all the bolts are tight. I did go in diagonal and worked my way to the centre of the sump. All nice and evenly tightened up. There were two extra long bolts and they both go here. One just there and the other one over there. And the sump bolt just goes there. Whilst we're still working on the sump, I better fit the new dipstick tube and dipstick. Very easy to do this, so I've separated them got the dipstick tube here that just goes down as far as it will go and there we go there you go it's just pushed down a bit more now there you go that's the new dipstick all done i'm now going to be refitting my thermostat now in a previous video i did get the order wrong i didn't know where the rubber grommet went so the rubber grommet goes first then the thermostat and then the clip I had to take it all apart again because I'd put the thermostat in the wrong way. Anyway, you live and you learn, don't you? Got the new gasket on now, so I just need to bolt it up and refit it. Engine's starting to get there now. Plan of action before I start to put anything else on the block is to give the block itself another coat of paint. I've already shown this in another video, so I'm just gonna get on with it and I'll catch up with you guys when it's all looking nice and shiny. Here is the cross member that I mentioned in the end of the last Escort episodes. I picked this up recently. I'm just gonna start to prep it up and paint it so it's ready to have my Pinto sitting on it. And just like that, the cross member is back to bare metal. It took about 20 minutes. I've managed to get in all of these crevices as well. I've done the whole undersides too. Just, yeah, getting in every nook and cranny. I had to get the wire brush out in the ends just to get into the tight sections, but I'm really happy with how this has come out. Paint of choice is this Hammerite metal paint. It says you can apply it direct to rust, but I definitely wouldn't have done that. But yeah, this stuff is really good and nice and strong. So let's get the cross member painted. Honestly, sometimes I forget how much of a great finish you can get with just Hammerite brushed on. Yeah, it looks brilliant. It will stay this glossy as well. So I'm going to leave this to dry and then I can do the underside tomorrow. But I think it's about time I get back onto the engine and do a bit more progress on that. Bag of bits. Right, let's take a brief look at what I've got in the bag. Some parts are new from Burton Power that I purchased a couple of months ago and some are just other bits that I need to fix the engine. Got some new ignition leads. This is a distributor that came with the Pinto. It's all good. 
and it's been converted to electronic ignition. It's just the leads are a little bit naff and yeah, one of the ends has come off. So I thought I'd adopt uh, the new black ones anyway. Got the fuel pump, nothing wrong with that. That could be refitted, but I do have a new gasket for it. Got a brand new oil filter. That's the alternator bracket. That needs a lick of paint and then that'll be ready to go back on. The alternator adjuster or aux belt adjuster, whatever you want to call it. And I've also got four new spark plugs. It's worth noting that I do have some more bits, but I need to find them before I fit them. So we'll get cracking with this stuff and then, yeah, I'll find the other bits that I've ordered for the Pinto. It's time now to swap over the HT leads. Now, these ones aren't actually numbered, so I'm just going off what one's the shortest one first, and that's gonna be called number one because Burton Power very kindly label them for you. So yeah, I'm gonna whack all these on and then the coil one goes in the middle. So yeah, let's quickly do them. There we go. I've just connected all of them up. Very satisfying now and it's gonna match my color theme because yeah, red just isn't in with mine. So they can stay there and they can be a spare. What I'm going to do now before I fit the distributor is I'm gonna change all four spark plugs. I'm pretty sure these are all just finger tight. They should be anyway. Lovely and clean. I've cleaned this all up now. And I'm pretty sure there's no key way to put this in. Place it in. Dropped in already, so. There we go. Well, it's screaming out for a couple of clips, but they all fit and line up nicely. Might as well change the oil filter while we're here. Yep, as predicted, it's pretty much bone dry. It's as easy as it sounds, spinning filters, hand tight, that's ready to go. Fuel pump up next, let's just take this old gasket off. There we go, the surface of that is all cleaned up now, ready for the new gasket. It's sort of like two gaskets on a plastic block. There we go get the bolts somewhat started. There we go, now ready to fit. Whilst I was doing up them two bolts, I realized I need to do the one for the distributor as well. So I'll just whack that in there and tighten it up. I've just cleaned up this little breather valve. Basically goes in here, so I just removed the tissue that I had in there. Should just slot in. There we go. Things are starting to take shape again now and I've just found my new studs. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go around and replace all of the old studs. Some of them are left in from when I removed the inlet manifold. Some of them came out with it. As you can see on the exhaust side, there's literally only a couple that stayed in. So I'll remove all of them and fit all the new ones. So that is my cross member now all refreshed. As you can see, I've done the bottom as well and I managed to get in all of the holes. I haven't left a bit of this 
cross member without fresh paint. Yeah, really happy with how this has come out. Surprising what a thick coat of hammerite can do to a rusty old cross member. Anyway, I've had some goodies delivered. Let's open this up and see what I've got inside. First thing I've got is some Escort standard engine mount cups. So these are from Motorsport Tools. They weren't too much. Yep, there they are. I'll unpackage them in a minute. And the other thing that's been delivered is the engine mount bolts that I ordered. These are just from a bloke off eBay. Let's get these new bolts onto the engine mount. And just like that, I've now got four brand new bolts holding my engine mount on. Here are the cups. I've just unboxed this one. Literally just slot on there. And then once it goes through the cross member, I can put a nut on the end and tighten that up. Here's a before, and that is the after. Lovely stuff. Really satisfying. I've got a couple more engine parts that I'm going to paint black now. And I've also kind of gone a little bit backwards. I've removed all the spark plugs just because I want to paint in here. It used to be red in all of them. So, and along here. And the same on the other side, there's a few little patches that I want to paint black. So I've just put some old wheel nuts in there for the time being just to keep any debris out of where the spark plugs go. So yeah, I'm just gonna get to painting some more bits and I'll catch up with you guys in a second. That's the engine now as it stands. You'll have to bear with me guys, I do sound a bit bunged up. I've been a little bit under the weather recently, but we're still cracking on. Now all I need to do is whack the spark plugs in and then I'll be all up to date with the new parts that I've fitted. The rocker cover is letting the engine down massively, I know, but I'm gonna get this painted once I've got the engine in the bay to avoid scratching it or anything when we put it back in the Escort. As for the exhaust on this side, I have already got a full system. I've got a four branch manifold as well, so I'll be fitting that once the engine's in situ. And also on the inlet side, I've still got the inlet manifold and weather carb that came with this engine, so I'll be fitting that once the engine is in the bay. I think that nicely rounds off this video. The reason I didn't get the engine in the bay in this episode is because I've come into a few issues with my gearbox. So I'm going to be running a hydraulic slave. So I need to purchase a internal slave cylinder. So I need to do a little bit more head scratching. I think Darren French has given me the links to all of the bits I need to buy in order to run a hydraulic slave. So I'll be purchasing them soon, and then once I've got all of that together, I can then mount the gearbox back onto the engine and fit both of them at the same time. So as I say, there's two or three bits that I need to purchase to convert my clutch system into a hydraulic operated rather than cable. So that'll be all done in another video. As for progress on the Escort, I've actually had loads of stuff delivered this week for the interior, so the next video is going to be fitting all of the stuff to the inside. You could probably already tell what I've purchased, but I'm really happy. I've already had a sneaky little look, and yeah, the Escort is gonna look brilliant. Anyway, I'm really happy with the progress I've made. The sump looks brilliant, and so does that cross member. Started to build up the Pinto with all the little bits and bobs that Attach onto the engine block. It's just, yeah, it's really coming together now. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a like. And if you like what you see, subscribe to the channel to see more. Thank you all for watching. And until the next one, I'll see you guys later.